The U.S. now where the White House moved aggressively to calm fears over the first person to be diagnosed with Ebola in the country. Representatives from Homeland Security, the Defense Department, and the National Institutes of Health took turns speaking to the public. Meanwhile, five days after patient zero was admitted to the hospital for treatment, hazmat crews made it to the apartment where he was staying. The family living there is still under quarantine as crews remove soiled clothes and linens. Jim Spellman is monitoring developments. He's live in our newsroom with more details. Jim? Uh, Mike, authorities are monitoring about 100 people who had contact with patient zero, but so far none of those people are showing symptoms of Ebola. After several days of delay, crews in hazardous material gear arrived to clean and decontaminate an apartment where four people are being quarantined under the close watch of armed guards. They all came in close contact with the first U.S. Ebola patient, Thomas Eric Duncan. Authorities are keeping track of as many as 100 people he contacted since he became contagious. Despite several missteps in the response to this case, authorities say they are confident the situation is under control. At this point, the situation is contained. We only have one confirmed case. The real issue at this point right now is to reduce that circle of 100 possible contacts and so we can be focused on recovery. And I think that's where we're moving. Of those 100 possible contacts, about 50 are having their temperatures taken twice daily to try to catch any Ebola symptoms early. And freelance cameraman for American broadcast network NBC News, who contracted the virus in Liberia, will be flown to the U.S. for treatment on Sunday. And in separate incidents, two men in the Washington, D.C. area with Ebola-like symptoms are being held in isolation while doctors test them for the deadly virus. Experts say physicians everywhere are learning from the Texas case. This is a wake-up call. This is a sign that we could have imported cases as long as there is this outbreak happening in West Africa. There are now hundreds or perhaps thousands of people at this very moment who are infected with Ebola. If any one of those people would travel, that person could end up anywhere else in the world, even before the onset of symptoms. The U.S. military will send 600 troops to Africa in addition to the 3,000 already committed. These troops will build infrastructure like Ebola treatment centers and provide logistical support. We're not going to be treating patients. The troops are not uh, equipped to do that. That's not their job. But we are going to be trying to help establish the infrastructure, uh, health uh, 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 facilities, uh, emergency treatment units, that kind of thing, so that the health care workers can do their jobs. The Pentagon says there ultimately could be 4,000 troops sent to West Africa to assist. And in the last few days, two new labs staffed by U.S. military personnel have begun doing blood work in Liberia. And the Pentagon says the first U.S.-built medical facility is slated to open October 18th. And, Mike, just within the last hour or so, a spokesman for the U.S. city of Dallas there in Texas uh, has announced that somebody in the area has donated a home for these four people in quarantine to stay in. So they will, at some point, leave the apartment and be able to go and be a little more comfortable, and perhaps those crews will have a better opportunity to decontaminate that apartment. We'll be looking on for more details on that uh, in the days ahead, Mike. Interesting. Uh, thanks for that, Jim. And, Jim, is there any talk in Washington of restricting travel between the affected areas of West Africa and the United States because of what we're seeing here? Yo, there have been calls here in the U.S. for a travel ban, but the Obama administration says they aren't even considering that. They say the best way to stop the spread of the virus is providing more assistance, like we saw in Africa, and to continue monitoring people as they travel from the region. The fear, Mike, is if you shut down air travel between there, you'll also shut down the flow of medical supplies and ex expert medical personnel that are going there to help. All right, Jim Spellman, live from our newsroom. Thank you so much.